area there, huh? Sergey Butenko, Tacoma, Washington. I don't know what I'm looking at, but it looks good. Some sort of insulated bricks, maybe? My sauna stove is finally here. I love you. You're so pretty. Look at this thing. It's very technical actually. There's all sorts of knobs and bells and whistles. And this is one of those things I'm definitely ha gonna have to read the owner's manual for because there's a lot going on. So what you're looking at is called a Kuma stove. Kuma is spelled K-U-U-M-A. And this Kuma is made by a company called Lampa out of Tower, Minnesota. So it's American made. It's my understanding that the folks that make these stoves have been crafting sauna stoves for six generations. So they know a thing or two about sauna stoves. And this is about as good as it gets in the sauna stove realm. This is a very luxurious sauna stove. It's like the Cadillac of stoves actually. It has an incredible reputation when I was doing my research and Googling stuff and reading books about sauna stoves, this brand kept coming up over and over again, and so I decided to give it a go. And one of the things that I want to note is that this is a dedicated sauna stove. It's, it's not a stove that's retrofitted for a sauna. This is actually made for a sauna. So it's going to give you all the creature comforts that you're going to want. It's going to make really soft and pleasant steam. And believe it or not, there are different types of steam. There's harsh steam that's going to make everybody want to jump out of your sauna and run away and never do it again. And then there's the Finnish way. I believe there's actually a word for it. It might even be kuma, uh, which means soft steam, gentle steam, steam that's going to kind of wrap you in its arms and just kind of cuddle you. And so it is really important what kind of stove you get. Um, in fact, you know, if, if I were to give you any piece of advice, it's that you can skimp on all kinds of things, but don't skimp on the stove. So make sure you get a good one because it's going to serve you for many, many years and it can make or break your experience. So that's why I went with this specific brand and I think I'm going to be very happy with it. Obviously I haven't tried it yet. This is only a speculation at this point, but I suspect that it's going to be the right decision. Now the very first thing that I want to do with this stove is I want to cure it. This is something that needs to be done with all brand new stoves and this essentially means that you're going to stoke it full of wood, start a fire in it outside, not in your sauna, and you're going to wait for all the toxic fumes to burn off, mainly from the stove paint that's been sprayed all over this thing. And so I'm gonna look like a crazy person because I'm gonna chop a bunch of wood on a hot sunny day and I'm gonna build a fire in a stove in a parking lot and people are gonna think I'm nuts but there's a really important reason to do that and it's for health. It's literally as easy as that. You just build a fire outside, put a bunch of logs in there, like you're stoking it up in real life, and then the metal and the paint will get nice and hot and all the nasty fumes are gonna burn off, and then your stove will be ready to use.
I think that we're gonna have to carry it like you on that side, this me on this side, you know what I mean? Oh yeah, it's gonna go to get sideways through the Okay, I'm gonna lean it. Uh oh you got it that way? Yeah. Okay. So those feet, they raise the stove three inches off the wood and give us a little bit more safety room because, you know, theoretically, that stove is going to get hot and you don't want anything hot sitting on wood. So this will give us some airflow and some more clearance. And look at how pretty that stove looks. I'm beyond happy. This is beyond anything I've ever dreamed of. I mean, look at this thing. This is a legitimate sauna stove. And on accident, I even accounted <laughs> for the stove to actually open up all the way and not hit anything. I guess I can't really take credit for that, but it happened, so I'm happy. Next on the agenda is to install the chimney. This is going to be one of those moments where we need a bit of luck because when we were cutting the chimney hole, we didn't have the stove. We used a template to guess. And hopefully we guessed correctly because if the chimney doesn't fit, we might have two skylights. <laughs> 